Uh, section 6.1, angle measures in polygons. We have a lot of different kinds of polygons. We have triangles with three sides. Quadrilaterals we know have four. Pentagons have five sides. And then we have hexagons with six. And we have uh, heptagons, octagons, nonagons. They continue on forever. A polygon is just a uh, you know an enclosed figure with at least three sides. So if we look at certain polygons, we can take a triangle. It's got three sides. Uh, the number of triangles and the sum of their interior angles. A uh, triangle is obviously going to only have one triangle if we use the diagonals to find it. And the sum of the interior angles is 180. If we look at a quadrilateral, it's going to have four sides. If we draw a diagonal from one, at, uh, one vertex to the other, we're going to end up with two triangles. And so our sum of our interior angles ends up being 360 degrees, which we'll notice is 2 times 180. If we looked at a pentagon, it's got five sides. We can draw in two different diagonals to make three triangles, and the sum of the interior angles is going to end up being 540, which is 3 times our 180. A hexagon has six sides. Consequently, it's going to end up with four triangles, so the sum of the interior angles is going to be four times 180, which is going to be 720. All right, so interior angles. Uh, our theorem for interior angles, we know the sum of your interior angles of any n-gon is going to be n minus 2 times 180, n being the number of sides of that polygon, so a triangle has three sides. A quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. Uh, after we get through nonagon, decagon with 10, we just start naming them. Usually uh, an 11-sided polygon would be an 11-gon. A 33-sided polygon, we would say, would be a 33-gon. Um, that's how we name them. So we know n is equal to the number of sides that triangle has. Uh, corollary to that theorem, we know the measure of each individual interior angle of a regular n-gon is going to be n minus 2 times 180 divided by n. n is the number of sides. It's also the number of, of interior angles you're going to have. So if we take the total degrees that it has to add up to, uh, a regular polygon means each angle is going to be equal to each other. So then if we divide that, the total interior angles, uh, the sum of the interior angles by the number of angles, we're obviously going to get what each angle equals. A regular polygon is a polygon in which all of the sides and angles are congruent. All other polygons are non-regular polygons. We may be asked to find the sum of measures of the interior angles of a convex nonagon. We know a nonagon has nine sides, so we just use our, our angles theorem to find the sum of that. We know we take the number of sides minus 2 and multiply by 180. So we're going to take 9 minus 2, multiply that by 180, and we are going to end up with 7 times 180, which is uh, 1,260. All right, if we were asked to find the value of x here, we need to, uh, well, we realize that it's a convex polygon, so we count the number of sides so that we can find the total uh, number of angles. If we look here, we have a six-sided figure. So we just use our theorem to find angles. We know uh, the total sum of the angles needs to be 720 because 6 minus 2 is 4 times 180 is going to give us our 720. So we add up all of our angles, uh, including that x, set it equal to 720. Then we can solve for x. x is going to equal 113. Here we're asked to find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex octagon. As soon as we see octagon, we know that we have an 8-sided figure. So we plug that into our formula. We have 8 minus 2 all times 180. So what we have here is 6 times 180, which should give us our answer of 1,080. All right, here we're asked to find the value of x. Uh, we've got a four-sided figure, uh, so we could use our theorem to find out the number of 
uh, degrees that the interior angle should sum to, but we're looking at a quadrilateral. We know quadrilaterals are going to add up to be 360 degrees. So all we need to do is take all of our angles, add them up, and set it equal to 360. So we know we have from angle X, we've got 10X plus angle Y, which is 6X, plus angle Z, which is another 6X, plus angle W, which is 3X uh, minus 15. That all needs to equal 360. So moving that 15 to the other side and combining like terms, we are going to have 25x equal to 375. So then we know x is going to equal 15. We're confirmed x does equal 15. Uh, from here, we could be asked to find any any number of the, the different angles we know. Uh, y is going to be 90, which means Z would also be 90. We could plug in 15 for any of the X's. Angle X there would be 10 times 15 to give us 150 for that angle, um, and so on. How are we going to find out how many sides a polygon has? If the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon is 140 degrees, how many sides does that polygon have? Well, there we can just plug it into our formula again, except we know that uh, uh, each angle needs to equal 140. We're told that it's a regular polygon, so we use our formula n minus 2 times 180 all over n equals the degree measure of each angle, which we're told is 140. And from there we can solve that for n. We're going to multiply both sides by n to get that to the other side. Uh, distribute our 180. 180 times n now, minus 360, is going to equal 140. Uh, we combine our like terms, so 40n is going to equal 360, divide both sides by 40n is going to equal 9. So a nonagon, or a nine-sided figure uh, that's regular, is going to have 140 degrees for each angle. The measure of an interior angle of a regular polygon is 144. Find the number of sides. So again, we use our formula for regular polygons. We know n minus 2 times 180 all over n is going to equal that degree measure, which is 144. So we move that n to the other side, and we distribute our 180. So 180 n minus 360 is going to equal 144 n. We can subtract the 144, add the 360 to the other side. Uh, so then 36n is going to equal 360. Divide both sides by 360. Clearly n is going to equal 10, which is D. Exterior angles. The sum of the exterior angle of a convex polygon uh, with one angle at each vertex is going to be 360. So if we look, no matter how many sides... Uh, we have the exterior angles uh, of each polygon are going to add up to be 360. And if you look at our picture here, the rays of each of those uh, all end up going clockwise. As long as we make sure we go around uh, one direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise for our exterior angles, uh, we'll never count them more than once. Corollary to that, the measure of each exterior angle of a regular n-gon is going to be 360 divided by n. Here we are asked to find the value of x and each angle measure. Uh, again, we know that the sum of all of our exterior angles are going to be 360, so we just add all of those up, set it equal to 360. So we know 3x plus, 2, plus x plus 2x plus 2x plus 4x needs to equal 360. Uh, combining our like terms, 12x is going to equal 360. Divide that by 12, x is going to equal 30. Now we can plug that back in to find each one of our angles. Um, and uh, that would have been easy. Here we're asked to find the value of x. We know we have uh, an octagon, so it's an eight-sided figure. We know that uh, the sum of all of them would have to equal 360. So... We can plug that into our formula, uh, 360 divided by the number of sides. Uh, just kidding, this was a seven-sided figure. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so 360 divided by 7 is going to equal each angle measure. 360 divided by 7 here is going to be 51.4 degrees for each angle. Uh, if that would have been an eight-sided figure, 
we'd have had 360 divided by 8. Say it was a 33-sided figure, we'd have 360 divided by uh, 33, or whatever our... Find the value of x in the diagram. If we look, we've got a bunch of exterior angles, uh, all with the variable x. So we know the sum of all those exterior angles is going to add up to be 360. So we just uh, combine them and add them up to be 360. So we know 4x plus 5 plus 6x plus 5x plus 4 plus 5x plus 2 plus 2x plus 3 plus 3x minus 4 is going to equal 360. So we combine all of our like terms. We've got 4x plus 6x is 10x. 5x would be 15. Another 5 would be 20. And then 2 and 3 would be 25. So we've got 25x. Um, then we've got 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 2 is 11 plus 3 is 14, minus 4 is 10, so we've got plus 10 equals 360. So then 25x is going to equal 350. Divide both sides by 25, and x should equal 14. So x in our case is 14. Again, we could use that to find any one of these individual exterior angles, but we know uh, that x is 14. Find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular pentagon. So we know a regular pentagon has five sides. If it's regular, it means all the interior angles are congruent, which consequently means all the exterior angles then are congruent. So we know five uh, times each angle has to be 360. Because there's five angles, they're all going to be equal. They need to uh, if they were added up, they would add up to be 360. So 5x equals 360. If we divide both of these by 5, x is going to equal 72. Uh, this ends the lecture for 6.1. Uh, if you'd like to work on any extra problems, you can go to page 393, 1 through 41, odd. Uh, otherwise, your blogs are due for tomorrow and we'll begin working on our homework checks.